Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're wearing your tin foil hat today because we're talking about jamming aircraft and no, not the jam coming from the jar, the jamming coming from those incredible pods on the side of the beautiful EA-18 Golf or Growlers aircraft. What an incredible F-18 and I really do love this jet because I am never really investigated much into them and how they operate. And they are a bit of a technological marvel when it comes to countermeasures and electronic warfare. And there's a lot of technicality to them that I just wasn't really aware of. And they are an old jet. They've been around for some time. My country still uses the CF-18. And I have a massive respect for the F-18 fighter jet. But the Growler is a different beast in every sense of the word. It's extremely fascinating. And as we dive into this bit of a marvel of modern engineering, uh, don't let its quirky name fool you. This isn't a bird it is a pure predator of the sky it's not just jamming the skies it can engage targets too which once again i wasn't fully aware of um you know anti-radiation missiles things like that i just thought it was just a pod holder and it could just fly around and piss everyone off but uh, it's a little bit more than that so let's talk a little bit about it today but before we do let me know in the comment section below please what you have in your lineup as your favorite fighter aircraft of anywhere in the world it doesn't have to be from a jamming perspective or you know electronic warfare just let me know it's uh, interesting to read your comments i try my best to engage with you all and give a little bit of feedback but if i don't don't take it personally but i do read as many comments as i can uh, and once again thanks for joining me let's get into this aircraft so born from the fa-18 f super hornet the growler is the u.s navy's top choice for electronic warfare Think of it as the ultimate multitasker, part disruptor, part protector, an all-round powerhouse for naval protection in the fleet. From jamming enemy radar to guiding allied forces safely through hostile skies, the Growler proves that in modern warfare, electronic warfare dominance is just as vital as the firepower being sent down range. So what's the heart of this aircraft? Well, of course, it is an electronic warfare juggernaut, and there's a lot of different systems that tie into how this system works. Picture this, you're in a high-stakes naval battle and your fleet is up against a huge amount of enemy radars, communications, and guided missiles. I've done a lot of videos recently on missile platforms that can take out ships, and this is one of those aircraft that could potentially prevent them from even getting to the target. Enter the EA-18G Growler, armed with an arsenal of tech so advanced it might as well be a wizard jet, and it is. It's fascinating to see the tech that is in these aircraft. At its core, the Growler's magic lies in systems like the AN-ALQ-218V receiver, which can detect, locate, and assess enemy radar signals faster than you can say incoming. Once a threat is identified, the AN-ALQ-99 tactical jamming system steps in. This throws out electronic noise that dazzles the enemy systems, leaving them blind, deaf, and disorientated. And the reason I'm talking about this aircraft today is because it's not an older generation, it's not something that's being phased out, it's actually being heavily upgraded. The Navy has been hard at work trying to get new systems into this aircraft with the advanced tactical jamming suite and the revolutionary next generation jammer. These tools enable the Growler to jam multiple frequencies at once, targeting swarms of drones and even use AI to outthink adversaries. And this is kind of like talking in the battlefield of the chess game, where the Growler is kind of two moves ahead, it sees what's coming way before a move is played, and that's what the fleet needs. When you're working with such huge ranges and distances, radar makes a huge difference, and if you can scramble radar, that's a huge win. Now, you might think the Growler is all about just jamming and disrupting enemy systems, and you would actually be wrong. But what if I told you it actually packs a mean punch in air-to-air -air combat too? That's right. It isn't just a tech nerd's dream. It's a fighter jet at the end of the day, and it still has some serious bite. In recent operations, the Growler actually showed its versatility off by taking down Houthi drones with the AIM-9X Sidewinder missile. An aircraft built to dominate the electromagnetic spectrum casually just switches gears and swats drones out the sky like a high-tech fly swatter. Rear Admiral Hack or Hackman Sadar of the Carrier Strike Group 2 described these feats as a testament to the Growler's flexibility. This dual capability is what makes the Growler so unique. While its primary role is to create an electronic corridor for allied forces and fleets, its ability to engage threats kinetically ensures it holds its own when things get a little bit up close and personal. Whether it's jamming enemy radars or scoring direct hits, the Growler is proving that it's not just a supporting act, and it's a star in its own right. I think the pilots of these jets probably don't 
perceive that they're going to go into battle launching AIM-9 next Sidewinders. They're kind of focusing on the electronic tactical situation, but they can do it if they need to, and that's really, really impressive. But let's face it, this beautiful Warbird has definitely seen a long service life. I do love my Canadian F-18s, and I'm sure the US Navy and those alike love their own F-18s. They're utilized in other nations as well, but they need a lot of love to keep flying strong, considering the airframes are so old. The EA-18G Growler is certainly no exception to this. Enter the Service Life Extension Program, or SLEP, where the Navy gives these jets a new lease of life. Originally designed for 6,000 flight hours, the Growler is now being upgraded to handle 8,000 or even 10,000 hours in the sky. How are they doing this? Well, first of all, they're reinforcing the airframe, upgrading the sensors and avionics, and integrating cutting-edge systems like I had mentioned before the next-gen jammer. There's not a huge amount of information on the next-gen jammer for obvious reasons, but it's very much like your old car getting a full overhaul and finding out it can kind of do Formula 1 races now. This jet has had a lot of money pumped into it, and for all the right reasons, it works very well in the electronic warfare world. And these upgrades aren't just about keeping the Growler operational, they're about keeping it dominant. It is really so good at what it does that the US military is saying, well, we've got F-35s and all this other technology, but... The Growler has a very close niche that is required in today's modern and strategic battlefields for aircraft to dominate the skies. With its extended flight hours and modernized tech, the Growler is remaining a very critical asset in the Navy's arsenal, ready to face a lot of new emerging threats in an ever-evolving electronic battlefield. But what about real-world deployments? What else has it been up to? Well, from the deserts of Libya to the turbulent waters of the Red Sea, the Growler has proven time and time again that it's doing its job very well. But you're probably all thinking to yourselves, well, Matt, you keep saying this is such an incredible aircraft. Give me some proof. Well, let's look at its real-world deployments. From the deserts of Libya to the turbulent waters of the Red Sea, the EA-18G Growler has proven it's worth time and time again. It is a veteran. This jet is not just a theoretical marvel. It has shaped a lot of advanced naval warfare. Take Libya, for example. Growlers provided electronic corridors that allowed Allied aircraft to operate safely against advanced air defenses. In Syria, they played a pivotal role in suppressing Russian-built systems, ensuring US forces maintained air superiority. But the action doesn't really stop there. In the Red Sea, Growlers have been instrumental in countering those missile and drone threats. They've jammed enemy signals, blinded radars, and even targeted directly, all while protecting their carrier battle groups. These real-world successes highlight the Growler's versatility and ability to adapt to just about any mission. Of course, they're not designed as a strike jet for the most part, they're designed to protect and disrupt, but they can designate to attack, if necessary, with long-range missiles. But like anything, it's a bit of an arms race in the digital world. As we venture deeper into digital technology, the Growler has to evolve to meet the challenges of tomorrow's battles. The next-gen jammer is something that has been designated to do so. Now, this isn't your typical jamming pod. The NGJ uses AI to detect, analyze, and counter multiple enemy signals simultaneously. As we know, in the civilian world, AI is dominating heavily. But picture this now as a chess grandmaster playing against 10 different opponents at once. The jammer is also capable of frequency hopping. This will allow to outmaneuver adversaries trying to counter its disruptions. But it doesn't stop there. The NGJ can discern friend or foe in very crowded electromagnetic environments, ensuring precision targeting without collateral interference to friendly aircraft or battle groups. While leveraging AI and advanced signal processing, the Growler is not just reacting to threats, it's actually predicting them well ahead of time. And this cutting edge tech gives the Growler a decisive edge in modern electronic warfare, where electronic dominance can actually make or break a mission, and if you can jam the eyes and the ears of the enemy, you're making a huge win for the services that you're protecting or supporting, whether it be the Marines on the ground or the Navy in the sea. But drones is something that this has really been also kind of zeroed in on, and they're very good at neutralizing swarms. And we've talked about swarm drones before on my channel, but in the sea, it's not as much focused on. We tend to look at drones more in the Ukrainian conflict, but drones being used at sea is certainly a risk for things like aircraft carriers. Phalanx and Sea Weirs can only do so much to knock out so many of these missiles or drones, and this system could jam them before even getting there providing enemy air defenses as well a downscale to minimize their radar detection. 
and the Growler is ready to tackle the unknowns of future conflicts with upgrades to the pods that can be placed upon the aircraft. But let's talk about the elephant in the hangar, the costs and the challenges of keeping this relevant but rapidly changing world of electronic aviation. It's not so glamorous, the price tag. Keeping this technological marvel is not cheap, and with adversaries developing countermeasures at breakneck speed, the stakes had never been higher. Each Growler costs millions just to operate, and the missions it undertakes are as risky as they are critical. Add that to the constant need for upgrades, and it's clear the Navy is facing steep hills to climb. But with the change in political government recently with Donald Trump, it's interesting to see whether or not this will be a change. I don't think the F-35 is going to be taking all the spotlight from this beautiful jet. It doesn't need to. It's a totally different platform, a different spectrum from like apples to oranges in capabilities. And I've had people challenge me before on talking about the F-18 for the fleet. It's here to stay, folks. It's doing what it needs to do, and the F-35 is only there for a small niche of combat. The Growler is going to be utilized for electronic warfare for a long time, and that's why you're seeing things like the next-gen jammer and the Service Life Extension Program. But the aircraft is thriving in the grand scheme of things. Although it's costly, it's proving that uh, adversaries are a little nervous of this thing when it gets into the sky because they know how good it is and how well it's worked through the generations of service as it flew from carriers and into battle groups that are being protected by it. And that brings us to the final chapter of the journey through this beautiful jet. From its roots, from an F-A-18 F Super Hornet to its evolution into the Navy's premier electronic warfare platform, the Growler has really carved out a legacy of innovation, adaptability, and in all honesty, just sheer tactical brilliance. She may not get the prestige or the sexiness of some of these strike aircraft F-18s or the F-35s being transitioned into the fleets, but if you don't have this aircraft in the sky and you don't have suppression of enemy air defense or seed, then that's a big problem for you. These jets are protecting you and your flight zone with every kind of electronic gizmo and gadget you could think of, and I think it's here to stay for the long haul. But what do you think of the EA-18G Growler? I'd love to hear your opinion. I am strongly interested by this aircraft. I'd love to see how long it stays within service. I don't think it's going anywhere in the near future, but what do you think? Do you think it's being a little bit too costly? Is the electronic warfare needing to start being pushed into the F-35? I don't think so. You know, the F-35 stealth configuration isn't going to look great with hundreds of pods all over it, but who knows? Maybe they're going to integrate stuff to the F-35 that doesn't need pods. It's hard to tell, but I think we're going to see a growler for a long, long time. Thanks so much for watching today, folks. Like I said, leave me a comment. If you could leave me a like as well for that algorithm, it really does help me. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me financially on this channel. I cannot express how much it means to me that you have been doing so. If you do wish to, please check out the description box below for my Patreon and my PayPal. And I hope you have a wonderful day. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.